Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas, everyone. Pastor Lauren and Kelly here, wanting to thank you for joining us. We are very thankful for this Christmas season, and we've designed a service just for you. We know you're going to enjoy this time together. than I've ever been, you came, forgotten among the cattle in the back stable, God with us, among the stench born with what they had to make do, the King of Kings sharing in our humanity, how much further could he go to know my humanity, my humanity, what did I have to offer, living in separation, a veil always between everyone, I'm scared of you on top of that mountain, 
I stand at the bottom looking up, I stand on the outside looking in. All consuming fire, keep your distance. I know where I stand and that I'm far away from you. This is my humanity. Living like this in a cave, grasping for light, but my eyes do not know any better. And is it the blind leading the blind? Will I remain in darkness? Why do I feel robbed? Living as a slave, bound to being disconnected. Everyone stay away. My heart is far from my father and my heart is far from my son. Why is my heart made of stone? It weighs like a rock in my chest. My humanity. Sharing in this, our humanity. O oh, Emmanuel, sweet Jesus, God with us. And there's a promise you wrote in my heart to show me a heavenly country. My dreams were a dark cave and you came as the light of the world. Now I see the mountains before me, snow sitting beautifully in valleys and plains and prairies of near unlimited fertility. Land I can dive my fingers into and of sunsets that never end. I lived in disconnection, but you are God with us. You gave me the spirit of adoption. You turn my heart to you and you turn my heart to them. And I'll build a house with these here in my hands and fill it with sons and daughters. Living now with your family as it numbers the stars and in your kingdom for which there will be no end. O oh, Emmanuel, sweet Jesus, what place could you have gone lower in that stable to come to me in my humanity, to bring me to you, for you are God with us.
Hello families near and far. So many of us are celebrating Christmas at home this year, and I'm going to FaceTime some of our C3 families and ask them to help me tell our Christmas story. It all starts with two teenagers. Well, it actually doesn't start there, but you know that. Our big God story starts many years earlier, but I don't have time to start at the very beginning. So for now, the story starts with two teenagers, Mary and Joseph who get engaged. They're excited and planning their wedding when one day, God sends the angel Gabriel to meet Mary and give her some special news. Now I've got a question here that I need some help with. I'm gonna FaceTime some kids and ask them to help me tell this part of the story. And here I'm gonna message the first one right now. Okay, thank you so much for helping me tell this story. I've got a question for you that I need help with right now. What do you think Mary looked like when she saw the angel appear? I think that they, like it would have been like this. <gasps> Whoa, what are you? What are you doing here? You're so bright. Uh, the angel tells Mary that she will have a baby boy and the baby will be named Jesus. He says that Jesus will be great, great and will be called God's very own son. Okay, my next question for for you right there is what do you think uh was mary's reaction when the angel said the baby would be god's own son what do you want you are going to have a born son wait i'm too old for that i can't have one if you have faith you will have a son uh, yeah, that's a pretty big deal to give birth to God's son. You would have needed some, well, a lot of faith. So Mary decides that she is going to trust God and believes what the angel has said. Then Mary goes to visit her cousin Elizabeth, who is also going to have a baby. God said that Elizabeth's baby would make a way for Jesus. Mary stayed at her cousin's house for three months. Okay, my next question for the next person here is, thank you for helping me. What do you think Mary and Elizabeth did for fun while she was visiting? Went to a hotel, got her nails painted, then my first slippy win. I think that they went for walks and picked out baby names and prayed a lot. And yeah. It sounds like Mary and Elizabeth had an awesome time. When Joseph finds out that Mary is pregnant, he has doubts about getting married. But then an angel appears to him in a dream. The angel explained that Mary had been chosen by God to be the mother of his son and told Joseph that the baby would be named Jesus, which means savior, because he would save people. The angel told Joseph he should still get married to Mary. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel had told him to do and took Mary as his wife. Now here's the next question I have that I need help with from somebody. Okay, all right, this question is for you. What do you think their wedding was like? Throwing flowers. And you know? have a big eating feast. Okay, it sounds like you've been to some awesome weddings. At this time, where Mary and Joseph lived was part of the Roman Empire. The Roman Emperor Augustus wanted to have a list of people in his empire to make sure that they paid their taxes. Okay, now this is a really great question. You will be a good person to answer this question. Okay, so my first question is, what are taxes? Taxes are something that Justin Trudeau makes you pay every time you buy something. People buy them and then they scan them. Okay, and okay, follow up question, a bit more personal. Do your parents pay their taxes? I think my mom and dad do pay my taxes. No. He ordered everyone to return to the town where their families originally came from and enter their names in a census. Mary and Joseph traveled a long way, about 70 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem, because that is where Joseph's family came from. Most people walked, but some lucky people 
had a donkey to help carry the things needed for the journey. Joseph was one of those lucky people so that Mary didn't have to walk so far while she was pregnant. Joseph and Mary still traveled very slowly because Mary's baby was due to be born soon. When they reached Bethlehem, they had problems finding somewhere to stay. And this is my next question that I need help with. All right, you can take this one. Tell me about baby Jesus being born. Um, Mary and Joseph had their baby at Bethlehem. And there's three wise men that gave three gifts. And there's this star that Mary, when they had their baby, them, they were having the king. The king was a part of the world, and the God knowed everything in his heart. Okay, that was awesome. It sounds like you've heard this story before. That was really good. After baby Jesus was born, nearby in the hills and fields, shepherds looked after their sheep through the long night. As the new day began, suddenly an angel appeared before them and the glory of God shone around them. The shepherds were very, very scared, but the angel said, don't be afraid. I have good news for you and everyone. Today in Bethlehem, a savior has been born to you. You will find the baby wrapped and lying in a manger. Then many more angels appeared, lighting up the sky. The shepherds heard them praising God, singing, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to everyone on earth. When the angels had gone, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see what happened. So the shepherds went to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph. The baby Jesus was lying in a manger, as they had been told. When they saw him, they told everyone what the angel had said, and everyone who heard the story was astonished. Then the shepherds returned to their sheep, praising God for sending his son to be their savior. And I've got a question that I need some help with right now. And I think you would be the perfect person to answer this. What is your favorite worship song? And could you sing it for us? Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Those are awesome worship songs. I love Waymaker. That's so good. When Jesus was born, a brand new bright star appeared in the sky. Some wise men in faraway countries saw the star and guessed what it meant. They were very clever men and studied the stars and had read in very old writings that a new star would appear when a great king was born. They set out to find the new king and bring him gifts. And this is my next question. Okay, what kind of gift would you bring baby Jesus? Myrrh, frankincense, gold, mm, baby bada. Those would be great gifts to give a baby. And I want to thank every one of you that uh, answered some of our questions here. They gave me a lot of insight into the story and into you and into your families. And we just want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Thank you so much. The wise man's gifts were gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They were very special gifts. The story of the birth of Jesus is finished, but that isn't the end of God's big story. God loves you so much. So make sure you take time every day to learn about Jesus, to listen to Jesus with your heart, and to see how you could be part of God's present day big God story. Thank you to our families, that help us make this story today. We wish you a wonderful and safe Christmas season. Merry Christmas to every one of you. Hi everybody, welcome to our candlelight service. We wanna welcome all of you online today. And uh, we know that things have been a bit inconvenient this season. 
Uh, we're all aware of that and we don't really care for inconvenience very much, but Christmas was about a child being born. And every time a child comes into a family, it can be a little inconvenient. Uh, the other thing, every time a child comes into a family, that uh, we find that everything changes. But there was one birth that changed everything. And it was on a moment and a night just like this, when God was about to send his son. He had prepared his son and all the angelic hosts were waiting for the coronation of a great king. But whoever would have known that he would have came under the radar into the womb of a teenager. And that's what I wanna look at today. What happens when we say yes to God? My encouragement to all of you that are watching right now is today, as God is speaking to you, that you'd be willing to say yes to him. And let that yes not just be a mental assertion, but let it be a complete experience, spirit, soul, and body, that we bring our yes to the Lord. And here's why, because God's still writing our story. There's a very big danger that I find when I try to take the pen out of God's hand and write my own story. But when God writes a story, and I assure you today that he's still writing a story, he's writing individual stories, he's writing city stories and nation stories, and these stories are still being written today. I want you to take your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Luke. And Luke begins uh, his chapter, or his, his two um, books in the Bible that were written by uh, Dr. Luke. And I love verse three, how it just begins the Christmas story. He says, having carefully investigated all of these accounts from the beginning, I've decided to write a careful summary for you to reassure you of the truth of all that you were taught. I wanna reassure us today of the truth, the truth about Christmas, simply Christmas. And I wanna remind us about the author, not just of this book, but the author of our life. And when we take the pen out of God's hand, we remove not only his authorship, but his authority in our life. And so when we look at the life of Mary, uh, Mary uh, was a very unique uh, individual. And I am actually personally uh, astounded how God takes nobodies from nowhere and he's not ashamed to be looking right now to finding where can I place my presence and who will host my presence. And, and I would agree with many of you who are watching in your living room right now that God's not limited to a screen or a device or even space and time. I read this morning from Revelation. It refers to the revelation of Jesus who was, who is, and who is to come. So God is outside of our limitations and our restrictions. Will you say yes to him today is my question. When we look at the story of, of Mary, and I love that uh, when we think of Mary, Mary would have been a student of scripture. And we see this young student of scripture um, quite surprised when the angel comes to her. Um, Mary would have known Isaiah chapter seven, where it says an angel or a virgin uh, would conceive. And most of the scholars in those days, I'm told, didn't believe that would be a literal translation. They thought it would be something a little different, that God would come as a child and into the womb of a virgin was a shocking thought for most scholars of that day. But wouldn't you know it? This young woman said yes to God and let him write the story of her life. She didn't just give him yes in a moment. She gave him a yes for the rest of her life and it changed everything. So I love reading this portion when the angel comes now, this is a second angelic visitation. One had came six months earlier to her aunt and her father-in-law or her uncle. And it says that how the angel came to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. And Gabriel appeared to her and says, Greetings, favored woman, the Lord is with you. The next comment is quite interesting to me. It says, Confused and disturbed, she tried to think of what the angel could mean. Uh, what happens when God brings a word to us? Uh, we want to be careful that we're not um, putting conditions on, on the word. When God brings a word to us and he begins to speak to us, it's because he's trying to fulfill a promise in our life. And most of us love promises, but we may not like the process of the promise. 
And when God gives us a word, it's for our destiny as well as the destiny of others. This just didn't impact Mary. It impacted generations and is still uh, impacting generations today. I want us to be very careful in this season and this time when we bring our opinions or our perspectives and we bring them to the word. The danger of that is that Jesus said, once you look for something, you begin looking for it, you'll find it. The danger of us bringing our perspectives and our biases to Scripture is we'll find ways to uh, uh, justify and confirm them. My Bible says, in the beginning was the Word. We begin with the Word. Otherwise, we create a circumstantial uh, theology where we find things to confirm our circumstances. So I want us to be aware of that this season. And... um, And what we do when God brings us a word is we need to agree with it. In order for this to be established on the earth, it needed agreement. That means it needs our amen. And so the angel comes to her, and and what she does is she begins to uh, say, I'm not sure, I'm a little confused how it's going to all happen, but let it be according to your word. And I love that she was surprised, but she was surrendered. And that's the point I want to make today. You might be surprised by a word from the Lord. My question is, are you surrendered to the word? And here's why. Because most often we would like the word to serve us rather than us serve the word. And Mary allowed uh, herself to serve the word. And, and it was just such a profound thought at Christmas time, how God would come as a child. He didn't come as a prophet to, to help us find God. He came as God to come and find us. It's quite a difference. And maybe today you're wondering, am I accessible to the Lord? Is he looking for me? And I want to reassure you that you can say yes to him today. And not only will he continue writing a story, but he'll write a magnificent story of your life, just like like he did in the life of uh, Mary. She was surprised by an encounter. And most of us um, are not Uh, convinced by simply a word. We need an encounter as well. Mary had an encounter. Uh, This week, I had an encounter. And what took place in that encounter was um, my wife was away in Saskatoon, and so uh, there I was doing dishes. Now, uh, it was a a, a few years ago I decided I'm going to make sure that we have very sharp knives. And so I make sure that my knives are always sharp. And so when I'm preparing my food like I do, you know, and... uh, like I cook, you know, and like I was washing dishes, you know, and so I get them nice and sharp. And so what I was doing was while I was washing the dishes, I was looking to see if there's anything else, if there's anything, uh, any still, any plates or any knives, uh, any cutlery, any, any knives that are really sharp. And wouldn't you know it, I had an encounter. And I stopped for a second and I looked down and the water filled with blood. Dum, 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 dum. And wouldn't you know it, I not only was aware that I'd had a knife in there, but I had an encounter with that knife. And uh, it's mostly healed now, and I appreciate your sympathy and empathy for all that. But Mary had an encounter. And I love that when she had the encounter, that the Lord found that she was willing. And what the Lord's looking for, for you and I this season, uh, is not genius. It's not, um, it's not intelligence. Um, it's not giftedness, it's simply willingness. And I just love the way that Mary was able to share that, that how she said, I am the Lord's servant and I'm willing to accept whatever he wants. May everything you have said come true. In other words, in other words, I surrender to the word. I allow that word now to come to pass in my life. And I think that probably there was a period of time she wondered, this could get complicated. This might get inconvenient. And in a culture like that, it would have been, would have been even uh, shameful for her. But she said, Lord, I'm going to let you write that story. And I'm going to say yes to you because I'm willing. And I love the phrase where it says um, that I'm a, I am the Lord's servant. Uh, the, um, the New King James and the NIV say, I'm the Lord's, Lord's handmaiden. And in that culture, the handmaiden was the lowest form of a servant. What she was saying is that I'm perfectly willing to serve God the word that you have brought to me. So let's just have a look at that a little bit further because we see what took place uh, earlier. We see that what took place was we found the priest uh, that he was, him and his wife had been praying 
and there'd been, it had been silent for 400 years. What took place there was, uh, for him, was that he was fearful. He was surprised. But, but we see that for years he'd been faithful. It's not enough to just be faithful. He was faithful and then he was fearful. Mary was surprised and she was also surrendered. Uh, I, I, I love that when we look at this, we see that it wasn't enough for Mary to simply have an encounter with the word. In 1 John chapter 1, we read this week about how uh, they were referring to the one who we have heard, <clears throat> we have seen uh, with our own eyes, we've touched with our hands. It was a full experience. I'm praying that God would give you a full experience this season, <clears throat> that he would give you not just some, some writing, but he would give you an encounter this season. And as we say yes to the Lord, he begins the process of you and I having an encounter with the living word. So <clears throat> Mary's response, she said yes to the Lord. And I love in my Bible, in verse 36, it says Mary responded. Uh, many of you understand this next prophetic poem or song to be what's called the Magnificat. And <clears throat> I, am, uh, I'm, I really love that Mary responded. I see many people, myself included, in this season reacting. But we're not, but, but may I encourage you to be responding to the word that the Lord has brought to us and is bringing to us. She responded to the word, behold, I'm a servant of the Lord. And I kind of feel like Gabriel hung around until he got a response. He wasn't looking for just a fearful reaction. He was looking for a response. What are you gonna do with the word that I'm bringing to you? And, uh, and he went on to confirm a number of things. This is what he, he you're going to name him Jesus. He'll be great. He'll be called the son of the most high. I, I love that. And then she says, how's this going to be? And she said, the Holy Spirit's going to overshadow you. And he explained how it was all going to happen. When God comes to us with a word, we need to respond to that word by saying, yes, Lord. And then as that word begins to work itself out, he begins to confirm that word more and more. And of course, he did with her, her cousin Mary, uh, Elizabeth. And, uh, and then she says this, and this is what I, I love to see this. Um, maybe she didn't understand completely, but, but she was willing to allow the Lord to work in her spirit, soul, and body. And, and I love that. I love seeing, uh, but because the word, when a word comes to us, it's not enough that it's just carried in our heads. It needs to move into our hearts and eventually into our lives. And I know when a word has begun to manifest in my life because I begin to express it. And Mary began to express it. And I love the Magnificat as it begins. And, and many of you will know this uh, because, because Mary, uh, when she surrendered to the Lord, she surrendered all of herself. And she, it begins by saying, my soul uh, magnifies the Lord. It's not that she just enough to give her body, but she gave her soul as well. That means her emotions and her will and her thought processes. And now she's beginning to declare that in a prophetic song. And it says that my, and my spirit has rejoiced in, Christ, in God my Savior. It was a spirit, soul, and body experience for Mary. She allowed the word to work within here. And in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, it says we're to present our bodies. And I think that this season might be a good time for you to rededicate your body, rededicate your mind, rededicate yourself to the word of the Lord that he's spoken over you. And you can read through it. And I love when, as God's writing our story, he begins to give us words. And in these next number of verses, it says uh, eight different times, it says, but he has done this. And it, yet it's, being, it's working through Mary, but she said, but the Lord is accomplishing this. And I love that when he begins something, he continues to work out his word and you and I begin to verbalize that. And many, maybe many of you, uh, it's time for you to start writing some songs or writing some poems or that 2021 might be a year. Uh, well, it's easily going to be a better year than 2020. Let, let's start it off with making prophetic declarations about the, the, the year that's ahead. And so God, she gave God the pen. And, and I love what took place here. In the last verse, I want to share with you where it says, how is this going to happen? And, she's, and, and the, the angel says that, this word, that, that the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you and overshadow you. The same word that was used when Jesus was on the Mount of Transfiguration. And in the book of Exodus, it's the same word that, that took place in the Holy of Holies. L listen, this is what took place. 
The miracle that took place at Christmas time was the teenage womb became the Holy of Holies. And you and I today, I even wonder when, when Jesus left, he said, I'm going to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. I realize that's a little out of context for uh, this specific word. But I'm saying, what if the Lord just wants to be with us so much and he prepared a place where if we would say yes to him, he would come and he would overshadow us and live within us. And I, if those of you who celebrate the Advent now, this is a time where we're, we light the, the fourth candle. And then on Christmas Day, we light the big white candle. We've already lit in the candle of love and hope. But this is the candle that we light for peace. And then we light the candle for Christ. And in a moment, we're going to light candles together. And in closing, I just want to pray with us because, because Luke was trying to say, um, I want you to know certainly the things that ha have, been, have been taught to you. Friends, can I just encourage you this season to ask the Holy Spirit to once again come and write in on the, our hearts and bring words of life and truth and may they be translated into words of care, words of compassion, words of peace. Let this be the season where you and I are not reacting to the things that are taking place around us, but set, setting ourselves aside, spirit, soul, and body, to hear the word of the Lord and then express that to people around us. If you'd like to receive Christ today, you can do so by simply saying, Lord, you're welcome to come into my heart. I'm willing to let you come and live in me. And I want to respond to that prompting today by saying, Jesus, come into my life. I want you to live within me. Come and overshadow my decisions, my thoughts. Come and live within me and let me live for you. Let me be an agent of hope, an agent of light, and an agent of peace in a world that's somewhat chaotic. In Jesus' name, amen. If that's you today, I, I hope that you prayed that prayer. And I hope that what God is doing in you is not a reaction to what's around us, but it's a response to his word that's alive in you. Let's be those vessels of greatness and goodness and compassion and empathy, caring for those around us. Let's be kind this Christmas. Make a little extra and go to your neighbor and say, I made a little bit too much, here's some food. Uh, when you're going past somebody on the road, make sure to say hi. When you see someone, uh, your neighbor shoveling, go say, let, let me come and uh, shovel with you. Of course, at a social distance, but let's be people who are not uh, simply reacting, but let's be responsive, responsive and let God write the story of our life. Let's put the pen back in God's hands, shall we? God bless you and have a very merry Christmas. Thanks so much for being with us tonight. We just invite you now to light a candle for the singing of Silent Night.
thy holy faith with the dawn of redeeming grace and Jesus Lord thy birth and Jesus Lord thy faith and Jesus Lord So from all of us at C3 Calgary West and, and from, from all of us here at C3 East, East Village, Village.